Hey guys, welcome back to Black, White, and the Grays. I'm Kylie, and today I want to talk to you about the flowers that we're gonna grow this year on our flower farm. We are also a vegetable farm, and flowers are kinda, this year, they're coming about equal with the produce, which I'm really excited about. And this is our second year flower farming and vegetable farming, so we're, learn we're still in the learning process, which is why this type of video because if we're it, our varieties I'm gonna talk to you about minimal this year and I, I have the tendency to go a little crazy with buying seeds so for me to be like holding back is pretty good so this is gonna be a little bit different than a normal flower farm video that didn't we didn't go crazy this year we did in a sense but not too bad the main cut flowers we're growing are sunflowers which do amazing here because of our climate we're a zone three so we have a really short season but then we also have a frost risk all year round which can make it a bit difficult to pick flower varieties and so I'm not able to grow your traditional like zinnias outside or dahlias outside or even cosmos cosmos are great they're hardy for a zone three but they don't like frost I need something that can withstand multiple frosts throughout the summer if it happens we don't always get it but last year we had seven frosts in just July and August so you just never know. In the year before, no frost. I'm going to be growing mainly sunflowers, sweet peas, snapdragons, Iceland poppies, and a ton of wildflower mixes that have a bunch of different things in it like echinacea coneflower, finium, lupin, bachelor buttons, a few, a bunch of few other things. And that, the reason I'm doing that is because I like that look of the bouquets. We are also growing, besides tomatoes and peppers for personal use in our greenhouse, we are going to be growing zinnias in there. And I kind of just want to fill up the greenhouse with a ton of zinnias to give that pop of color that's different than all these things. So the reason I'm keeping it kind of minimal is because, minimal is because of the, the, because one, budget. I want to stay on a budget and I don't want to become, I don't want to fork out too much cost because I'd one, I don't know, I'm not selling in, to any florists yet. It might be something we look into doing later on in the season. Two, basically what we've learned last year is, last year we did vegetables and that was our main thing. We did flowers here on the side. It was tough to sell our vegetables when we didn't have a set place to sell them prior to planting. This year we have a set, a few set places to sell them prior to planting so it makes things it's like a safety net which I highly recommend but flowers I don't have a safety net <laughs> and so I didn't want to fork out too much cash and lose and lose out but Lord willing if this flower season goes well next year <laughs> the limit is off I will we will start this fall and we will start peonies. Peonies are very, they very frost hardy. I love peonies, they're my favorite. And you plant, I, sh I have about 25 personal peony plants. Hope, Lord willing, they all pop up. I planted 20 last year and had five already established, but they're just around my house and I just, I love peonies. They're one of my favorite flowers. I wanna do a ton of daffodils and peonies and probably tulips. And tulips for the cut flower industry farming thing are annuals and I but and there's not much profit to be made from them because of that because they're still kind of spendy and you pull out the bulb when you do it because they just typically don't come back after you cut them so beautiful and they're so punchy and they're early so if I could get some early early bulb flowers um, I'll try some gladiolas and tulips and daffodils next year. That's this is that's a whole nother video for later on in the season. But Lord willing, we get to that point. But if we don't, okay. If you are you familiar with the Enneagram, it's really like it for personality things. I don't get too far in depth with it, but I'm a three, and a three's biggest obstacle, I guess, is they're scared of failure. <laughs> And, and if you watch any of my videos, I'm sure I address, especially recently talking about this upcoming season, failure is a big obstacle in my brain. I don't wanna fail. And also I tend to fail often, but I, they say it's not failure if you keep going. <laughs> so we're gonna keep that in mind. Our biggest successes last year were our sunflowers, which I actually didn't grow for cut flowers. I grew them in this small garden that I'm in and they just grow wild in here. Look back on our summer videos, garden tours, and you'll see our wild sunflowers in here. I love them, this is my favorite thing. Feels like you're in a sunflower wall. Also my wildflowers, my bachelor buttons, my baby's breath, and yarrow. Yarrow was a big surprise for me, I loved it. So we had a lot of fun flowers. 
and it was kind of rusticy, which I love. I would, I would like to take that start that we had last year and kind of transform it into a more rustic, professional vibe, if that makes any sense. And I really love sunflowers. So, Lord willing, if we just have a crap ton of sunflowers, I love a good sunflower bouquet. So, worst comes to worst. We're sunflower farmers and I'm okay with that. And we're gonna grow two different kinds of sunflowers this year. We're gonna grow the Pro Cuts and then we're just gonna grow some regular old hybrids. Don't confuse hybrids with GMOs. They're not genetically modified like that, so they're not sterile, but they are bred to withstand different things. Like I have some, I bought some sunflowers that were bred to withstand cooler temperatures, which is a win in our book because hello, where we live. <laughs> But also sunflowers I have found, if direct sown, they actually withstand quite a few frosts and quite a few freezes, and the mine have survived to like 15 to 17 degrees. I know it's crazy, I know. Especially if you live in a warm climate and the, any type of frost wipes them out, they just weren't used to it. When they're raised from a seedling in the ground here, they get used to it and they're perfectly fine. Now I will say at 20 degrees, they start looking a little wee, like they got hit, you know? But the flower's still there. <laughs> the foliage yikes but the flower is still there 17 15 degrees they gone for good which fortunately doesn't typically come to us until September so we have a ways but this year I want to start mine I'm gonna try and start them early and see how that goes pro cuts have a 50 to 60 day bloom time which is a single stem so you only get one bloom but I'm prepared, I'm ready to succession so this is like I'm pumping myself up for this because I am going to be a rock star sunflower farmer this year I vow <laughs> okay so the pro cut single stem so once harvest we gotta we just cut we the way we farm we cut the roots leave the roots in and then just amend the beds with some more compost plant the seeds again so it kind of leaves the roots in there for more like um is it biodiversity or is it more just like uh good for the soil you know they the roots get a compost in there and then you just get all the nutrients from that. And then we have also branching sunflowers, which are the hybrids I was talking about. They are longer to mature, but there's like, they got a bunch of stems on them. So we won't have to succession sow them very much or if at all, we'll have to see how it goes. I'm also wanting to start those because they take longer to mature. I got to start those ahead of time just to give myself the leg up because typically our sunflowers aren't ready till August. I need and want my sunflowers ready at the first, at the first few weeks of July if not the end of June. So I really am wanting to push them to get there. Lord willing, we get them at the first couple weeks of July. That's like goal, you know what I'm saying? And eventually, if we get a high tunnel, Lord willing, we get one this year, we can actually plant our first succession of sunflowers in the high tunnel to give it that leg up. But right now, we don't have that option currently. We could have that option. We'll find out in a month or so. Sweet peas. Where these, I'm kind of, pretty excited for. Be I think I didn't know how special they were. I hear um, people had them from their grandmothers, having them when they were kids and they just, it, the smell's just amazing. Okay, I haven't got to experience that. I, but they grow here. They like, they can handle frosts. So guess who's a sweet pea farmer? <laughs> That'd be me. So I have a few varieties I'm gonna try out this year just to see how it goes. I will show you those inside but before i go inside you'll see pictures of sweet peas and they're like six to eight feet tall huge but some don't get that tall and my sister and i made that mistake last year ours only got like ee, like two or three feet tall and there's different varieties and we just didn't it was just ignorance and we didn't know so now we know and we're gonna grow the big ones those i'm also gonna start earlier all right so let's go in i'm gonna show you my cut flower varieties that I'm growing and keep in mind we're minimal okay we're, we're minimal this year <laughs> I know I'm gonna go inside and then I'm gonna be like oh yeah I forgot I bought this and this and this and this and this and this and then I'm then you have permission to make fun of me for saying I had a minimal minimal flower farm okay okay so before I head in, if you have followed along with us for a little bit, you know our we have a family dairy cow. No signs of heat yet, so we're looking good. Welcome back to the kitchen table. All right, um, I knew I was gonna eat my words. This is still mint. <laughs> I can't even keep a straight face. These are my sunflowers. I listed all of these in my 
Johnny's order video. You can go and look at those. I'm not going to repost all the pictures. It was a lot of work. So you can go over to that video and check it out. And let me know in that video what your favorite pro cut flower is, or pro cut sunflower. So those are all the sunflowers. The rest of these, hey, I'm minimal-ish. Okay. Oh dear. Okay. 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 By the way, I have, let me, seed containers. Let me talk to you about these. I got this one the, at the Walmart. I love it so much. It holds my big packs. Like, it's not messing around. You know? Well, this one I got last year. I jumped on the bandwagon because, you know, everybody loves them. It's these guys. I have, I bought three. Uh, I, I have nothing to say about that besides that. I'm gonna start with a native to our area, so it makes it quite easy for us to grow. And that is yarrow. It is a beloved plant of mine. One, because it grows freely. We only have the white variety, but I have since added multiple pink varieties. Well, actually most of these I'm about to show you, I planted last year, but I thought, heck, I better get some old because just better. All right, this is a perennial, especially where we live. So if you're a local, it's also great for medicinal purposes, but you shall look that up on your own. We got the Parker's variety of yarrow. It's yellow, <laughs> it's yellow. Uh, Baker Creek is where I got all my yarrow seeds. I purchased yarrow last year from Johnny's in a small thing and more bang for your buck at Baker Creek. The Polish pastels. I have another couple of these at least. I love this mix. It is gorgeous. Look at those pinks. For rice, I don't know. Don't. I'm sorry for butchering this. Queen, Yarrow, she's gorgeous as well. Pink shades, so beautiful. And then the Colorado mix, which is traditional. It does have the white in it, just so beautiful. And because they grow here and they're perennials, that's a must grow for me. Can handle all the frosts, all the freezes, all the things. It. It, it'll be okay. These, on the other hand, are not. These are going to be in my greenhouse. Seed packets I did not order this year, so it might not seem as minimal as I was thinking because <laughs> I'm gonna bring in some of my leftover seed packets as well. I'm gonna start us off with this gorgeous illumination. Zinnia from Baker Creek, oh my gosh. She's a beaut. Frost tender people, going in the greenhouse. I got these, the fruit smoothie mix, purple prints, so pretty, from Burpee. And this one, I don't love them, but I thought it'd be my, it might be cool in a bouquet, is the peppermint stick mix colors. Cupid mix, super cute. And then, these are super adorable. The pink Senorita, did it focus? And then I have two from Florette. I have the queen red lime, I'll insert a picture. Aztec Sunset. They're both gorgeous. I also, my friend, this is this, her and I, we've actually never met in person, but we're in a cooking community together and we became good friends over that and we've really bonded over gardening. She is down in Florida and I'm here in Oregon, obviously. We live in very different zones and we exchange some seeds together. So she, I wish I was as creative as her. She put it. Like seriously, isn't that the cutest thing ever? She gave me some zinnias as well, the cactus zinnia. Cactus zinnia, I'll insert a picture of it. Is I'm really excited. And that was saved from her own seed. So that is an extra special variety for me. Sweet peas, I'm gonna be honest with you. Floret is crazy expensive and I know that. Like you pay a bazillion dollars for like 10 seeds. I assure you, I know it's crazy but they also breed their own and they have some really unique varieties. I'm not saying all of mine are unique varieties, but I couldn't help myself. I really like the Fairy Morris and it has had great germination for me. So this is what I'm super excited. And like I said last year, my sister and I grew all the, I must have got a crap ton of these. Okay, I got a crap ton of these thinking, I'm not gonna buy from Florette this year. Joke's on you, Kylie Gray. These are just the early flowering mixed sweet peas. They get up to five to seven, there it goes. 
if it sees my face, it won't focus. Plan on where I'm going to plant them. I'm gonna plant them towards the back of the market garden by the greenhouse. We have a dirt pile for our kids. They play there when I'm working. And I thought it'd be really cool to have like a wall of sweet peas to do one of to do two of things. One, knock it out so I don't have to look at the dirt pile, <laughs> but I still have my kids in there with me playing and I love hearing them holler and have a ball with their tractors. And But two, I also think it'd be really cool for them. It seems like, it would seem like their fort is like secret behind a seven foot wall of flowers. I think that's pretty cool. All of these are florets, so I will, fun, all these pictures I will insert is the Florence Court. I don't know what it looks like, <laughs> but I bet it's gorge. <laughs> Next is the Jeff Hughes Pearl Anniversary. Mark Herod. Oh, I do remember this one. Okay. The Millennium. I actually might have grown this one last year, but it was in the, the flower garden. And uh, I think I had a bloom. I told you, we had a bad year. <laughs> But keep in mind, each of these only have like 10 seeds in them from Florette. So you're paying like six to seven dollars for 10 seeds. Always check, always check other companies. I think they have great, beautiful flowers here, but it's just a kick in the teeth. I have two varieties. These are incredibly difficult to grow, so I hear. This is my first time growing them this year. I will be starting them actually pretty soon. They are the Iceland Poppies Sherbert Mix and Iceland Poppies Pastel Meadows. So gorgeous. Now I did check everywhere. This florette was the only place I could get my hands on these puppies. They're gorgeous. These actually do great for cut flowers. In my poppy video, I had mentioned them briefly and these are like the only variety that I know of that actually are good for cut flowers. All the other varieties that I think are even a little more beautiful and they're bigger and they're like more flashy, none of them are good for cut flowers and they grow great here. I just hope I can get these to grow. And these, this variety doesn't mind being transplanted like all the other ones. So I have a ton of black bachelor buttons planted out in my garden already. But I have the Centura mix from Johnny's, which is just like um, a mix. It has a bunch of different things. But I grew red ones last year. I had some hot pink, all the colors. I grew all the colors. Here, I have a few varieties that are just, I have single packs of. These are just kind of fun. Local farm store had a massive sale for seed savers at the end of, well, just actually a few weeks ago or in December. They were so cheap. So I got a ton of seed savers flowers and they actually are pretty hardy for our area and most of them I've never grown. Some lemon mint. Is that one pretty? Hardy. People use it as a cut flower. So am I. It's beautiful. I got these little cute guys. Aren't they so cute? They're just different. They'd be a good little filler. And I got a, several packs of those. I got some Love in the Mist. Also, this is a really good cool flower, like cool temperature wise. Also cool, cause it's cool. But um, this is a Love in the Mist, it's a blue one. It is the Miss Jekyll. Can you see that? Beautiful. I also, this weekend, picked this up at a local farm store. Love in the Mist African Bride. It's same kind of flower, just foxgloves. First time growing these, kind of excited. Don't know how well they'll do. This, so these next couple flowers, um, the foxgloves and the snapdragons. They are cool flowers, they're hardy annuals, but I just don't know how they're gonna do with a frost, like say once they're mature. And I hear that they can handle light frost and it might be a gamble, kind of like the Cosmos last year. They might be a little more hardy than that maybe. I don't know. They just, we'll see. We're going to try them out this year. Both the Fox Club, Digitalis, and Snapdragons. It's a beautiful mix of a bunch of pinks. They're so pretty. This one, these two are from Florette last year, and I think I did try to get these to grow. Last year, I didn't have a single one germinate. I could have neglected them also, so there's that. 
These, this one is the Apricot Beauty. Oh, she's a gorgeous. And this is the Excelsior. So I'll put those here. Those are so pretty. I'm excited to grow these. Like I said, flowers are a bigger priority this year. So, all right, for my Snapdragon, same thing. I got these at, they were like 50 cents a pack. Petra Mix of Snapdragons. I have a few packs of these. Super beautiful. These are the First Ladies mixed colors. So we're going to try and start those. I also have a burpee. I don't know where this came from. I must have bought this, but the delphinium. I also have lupin around here somewhere. This I'm curious to try out. This is also, I got it as smoke and deal. Kiss me over the garden gate. Aren't they gorgeous? I heard a flower farmer talk about these and I just happen to have a, quite a few seed packets from that sale. So I'm going to try that out. Most of these I say I didn't really purchase the this year. The sunflowers, I purchased all those. The zinnias I showed you, I purchased all of those. And the yarrow, I purchased all of those. And a few random things here and there. But a lot of these things I had left over from last year or I got it on a smoking hot deal not that long ago. Calendula, oh my gosh. I also have one from my friend from our seed exchange that I'm excited to grow. I had never heard of this variety. It's from Baker Creek, she says. It's the Calendula Flashback Mix, which I don't have. They didn't have that this year, or if they did, they were sold out of it. Well, mine have a theme. <laughs> okay, so I got the Calendula's Pink Surprise. These are great cut flowers. They're also very hardy. So beautiful. It's kind of showing up kind of orange, but it's more pink in real life. The Strawberry Blonde, I grew this last year. I really did enjoy it. And I just picked this one up from the farm store and it is the, that's cute, Calendula iPot Marigold. <laughs> oh, so cute. Zeolites. These are cute, I think. I also have some Baby's Breath from Johnny. Echinacea coneflower. I cannot get echinacea coneflower to grow to save my life. I'm going to start it this year. I'm going to give it a whirl. I have so many seeds I bought last year. Um, I bought two packs. I don't know why one was certified organic and one wasn't. Um, I must have thought it was a different flower. I have no idea. But I grew a lot of it, couldn't it? but nothing grew. So I, I planted a lot of it. I didn't grow a lot of it. Cosmos, the bane of my existence. I want them to grow so badly. I could try and plant them in the greenhouse, but I feel like I'd rather give that space to frickin' the zinnias. They're just more bang for your buck, literally. All right, so we have versus Salus mix. The double click bicolor violet, double click cranberry, and the so I have a ton of Fairy Morris seeds. These, oh, okay, so also last year our, do you have a Habitat for Humanity restore? We do. And last year, before the pandemic, I guess 2019 seeds from Lowe's they got, which they had thousands, thousands and thousands, like hundreds of thousands of seeds. And they, I'd keep going back and going back. They had them for like four, four dollar. And then eventually they went down to, I filled, a huge grocery like a plastic grocery sack full for five dollars and it's nuts so how much you can fit in there and my mom and my sister and I both went and they still had so many seeds and we spent a few hours there it was it's one of my cherished memories <laughs> we were able to fill a whole grocery bag so I forgot about that so a lot of these seeds come from that as well the fairy Morris seeds at least but here is from the deal from the, the Seashells Cosmo Mix are the Dwarf Cutesy Mixed. Aren't they so cute? And they're a dwarf variety. I will attempt to grow them. And then this is the Sensation Mixed Colors. Gorgeous. If I, I just want them to grow. Don't you want to grow for me, Cosmos? All right, now I have a few randos. I hate to tell you this, but I do have a shopping cart full of seeds from Johnny's. But now that I'm kind of looking at this, I might not need a lot of them. Maybe I shouldn't. Yikes. Okay, so the Orc 
or arc. I should have figured out how to pronounce this. I have my own seeds, a crap ton of them saved. Phlox, I got this from Florette last year. Um, then I got the chocolate lace flower, got that this year. And then the stock vintage brown, which stock is a completely new flower to me. And that is actually what I have a ton of my Johnny's seeds in my order right now, currently for Johnny's because they're gorgeous and sweet peas. But I think I can resist the sweet peas. I think I have plenty of sweet peas to get me through. Or do I? I make no promises, people. One last thing, people. I grabbed a ton of wildflower mixes because they're gorge. This is a white, oh, I'm so excited for this. This is a perennial wildflower mix. So I'll probably grow that somewhere special. Perfect for me. Then we also have the wildflower. Um, this is also a perennial mixture. <laughs> Yay. Not in the bag that I got from the Restore last year, but they I repurchased them this year because I loved them so much. Um, the Fairy Morris Wildflower Blend, it was so good. I just, it was a good mix. All right, folks, that's all I got for you. And I'm sure there'll be many more types of flowers to come in years. And like I said, we're going, I wanna really put the investment in, Lord willing, if we do good this year, Lord willing, if we do really good this year, I really need to put an investment towards perennial flowers that like, Peonies is a major goal. I shoot peonies. Oh my gosh, I would love just to have a whole farm of peonies. Peonies and daffodils and tulips and just more bulb type thing. Just go from there with that because I want to be a legit flower farm and I know we are, but I want to have the perennials that you don't have to spend a bazillion dollars every year for them to keep coming back. And also, Unlike the Iceland poppies, they don't need babysitting. Let me know what your favorite flower variety is or whatever. Mine is definitely either the Kiss Me Over the Garden Gate because it's adorable. The name is cute and it's beautiful. But also I'm excited for this, for some wildflower mixes. I love wildflowers. Wildflower bouquets are my favorite. Add in a few sunflowers, add in a few volma things and that's my favorite bouquet which is why i'm growing them for you <laughs> all right guys thank you for following along with us this is gonna be a really fun season we got a lot going on i'm so excited for this season and i thought i was feeling deprived thinking i had not many seeds but i have way i uh, this is not a minimal garden guys i knew i was gonna eat my own words but i am grateful for what i have and what we've gotten over the few years to start this flower farm head on this year and I'm excited. See ya next Tuesday for another video. Bye guys. Hey guys, welcome back to Black, White and the Grays. Sorry for the wind noise if you can hear it. I'm hoping our new, hello, goosey goosey. Beatrix, Harriet, the geese, they typically like to talk when I talk. So just bear with me. Hey guys. Hey guys. Hey guys. <laughs> Girls. Really? 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 Hey. Hello. I got hair everywhere. Hey guys. Hey guys, welcome back to Dragonfly State. <laughs> well, yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to Black, White, and the Grays. I'm Kylie, I'm the farmer here on our little farm. Okay, whatever else. Hey guys, welcome back. Hey guys, welcome back to Black. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. Oh my gosh. Whose idea was it to get geese? Yeah. Hey guys, welcome. <laughs> hey guys, welcome. Are you serious? Hey guys, welcome back to Black, White, and the Grays. I'm Kylie. We are, hmm, yep, I don't know what I'm gonna say.